Hey, super awesome that you're here today. What if there would be a better way to reason about your code than to put print statements everywhere? Well, let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Johannes Frey, but you can simply call me Joe and I've been working as a software engineer for more than 15 years and I switched to data science and data engineering about four years ago. And I'm here to share the few little things that I picked up along the way. Let's talk about an important topic or rather technique that so it seems not so many people outside of the software engineering field know about. And especially I didn't see it often in the data science and data engineering projects where I've been working in. And this is testing. This will be a series of videos and I'm not sure yet how many videos it will be in the end. But this video right now will be about software testing in general and it will lay the foundation for all the other videos to come. In the other videos we will then go much more in detail about uh, code and about the most common testing scenarios and also how to integrate those techniques in your everyday project life as a data scientist or data engineer. All right, let's talk about software testing. What is it actually? Well, so whenever you write code, you also need to check whether it actually does what you think it does, right? Most people use print statements to display the contents of variables on the screen to check whether the content is actually the value that they expect. And other people might, for example, use a debugger to do the same thing. Well, the more complex your program gets, the harder it is to manually test all the possibilities. And also, there is a very important thing that's called regression. Well, regression does not have much to do with things like logistic or linear regression. Regression gets introduced whenever you add or change something in your program that breaks something that has been successfully tested before. Those things go often unnoticed because you've already tested them and you moved your focus to the stuff that you're currently working on. And there is no way that you can manually reiterate and test everything that you've done all the time. And this is where automated software testing comes into safe today. You basically do the exact same thing like you do with the print statements or with the debugger, but now rather than checking the values with your eyes to see whether yeah, they are what you expect, you write it down in the code. So you write down your expectations. This gives you peace of mind because you know whenever you introduce regression, the test will fail and will notify you. So before we go deeper into the different kinds of testing, let's talk about some more benefits of software testing. So far we have talked about things like peace of mind and ensuring that new features don't break existing features, but software testing can also be used for debugging because whenever you notice a bug or somebody reports a bug to you, you can go and first write a test to reproduce that bug. And then whenever you reach the point where this test passes, you know that you fixed the bug and you also know that this bug will not happen again because you now have a test that will catch it. Also tests can serve as some sort of living documentation. So whenever somebody is unsure how to use your code, that person can look into the tests and see how you use it there. And the nice thing about that is that the tests evolve with the code. So it's not like you have a written documentation somewhere in Confluence that nobody looks at because it's outdated anyways. Since the tests are so close to the code, they are always up to date and they are actually reliable. The last benefit that I want to mention because else the video gets way too long is that testing actually helps you in your software design because it ensures that your uh, software or your classes are loosely coupled and that there are no strong dependencies between those. But I will go into much more detail in another video, I guess. Now that we have talked about the benefits of testing, let's have a look at the different kinds and actually scopes of testing. But before that, a quick shameless plug to go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me out, so thanks a lot. Unit testing has the most narrow scope of all the testing types and is basically focusing on testing a unit of code, which is usually some sort of class or method or really a small unit. And the goal is to test that unit in complete isolation. This means that all dependencies need to be isolated and replaced with something static. For example, a query against the database needs to be isolated and replaced with, for example, reading a static file with some um, static records so that you have a fixed 
data set that you can test against. Unit tests are the main focus of this series of videos and I will go into much more detail on that topic in the other videos. Integration testing expands the scope to also include third-party systems like for example databases or web services. And the goal is to, as the name suggests, test the integration with those. So to be sure that you have the correct login information, that you have the correct firewall rules in place and that the data that you are receiving actually has the format that you were expecting it to have. Those things are an integration concern and are covered by this testing scope or kind. End-to-end -end testing expands the scope even further. So now you pretend that you are an actual user and test the system end-to-end. -end. So for example, when you have a web service, you will actually use a REST client, for example, to make actual requests to your service and see how your service actually responds to that. Or if you have, for example, a web application, you could use tools like Selenium that can actually go and automatically click on buttons on your web application and navigate navigations and so on and so forth to really have the experience that a real user would have and test the system in this way. There are also more exotic things like, for example, visual regression testing, but yeah, I won't go into much detail about those. Generally speaking, the wider the testing scope gets, the more complex and slower the actual tests get. So what happens usually in the real world is that there are lots of unit tests because those are fast to execute, but there is less integration tests and even less end-to-end -end tests. Well, there are two ways to use software testing in the real world that I can think of right now. So the first would be to use them in a CI-CD pipeline. This is basically, for example, whenever you push code to your GitHub repository and your CI-CD pipeline starts to deploy your software, for example, to a dev system, you want to uh, integrate the tests in there and actually before the actual deployment. So in the CI-CD case, you would integrate the tests into your CI-CD pipeline before the deployment step. And so whenever you push code to GitHub, for example, and your CI CD pipeline runs, the tests get executed. And whenever there is an issue, the pipeline will fail before it deploys the software. And so you will know about it. The CI CD pipeline will inform you and you can fix the issues. So the second way would be during development. During development, you could manually execute a test to see whether everything still works fine or whether you introduced uh, some sort of regression and then you can fix it. And also some people go as far as writing the tests actually before they write the code. This is called test-driven development. And yeah, some people use it actually in the projects that I've been working in. Yeah, it wasn't used that much. I use it occasionally, but also not all the time. Um, usually, yeah, most people write the code first and then write the tests for the code, but you can go as extreme as doing it test first. All right, now we covered the fundamentals of software testing. We talked about the benefits, we talked about the different kinds of tests, and we talked about how tests are usually used in the everyday projects. In the next videos, as I already said, I will focus more on unit testing, and we will talk about things like the point of unit tests, about how to properly do unit testing, the typical challenges while doing unit testing, and also how to properly isolate your tests. So there will be lots of code in the next videos. And yeah, if you would like to see it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also a reminder to go completely insane on that like button. That would really help me out. So thank you a lot and see you in the next videos.